step along the rum's journey is the aging or maturation stage. At this point, the rum is usually transferred into barrels or casks where they will spend months or years developing flavor profiles imparted by the barrels. Most barrels are made of oak. However, they can come from any tree variety. A vast majority of aged rums seem to be maturing in barrels that formerly aged bourbon whiskeys, where they capture some of the flavors left by the bourbons. Now, why are a large percentage of rums aged in bourbon barrels? Well, it comes down to availability and the stringent rules applied to bourbons. In order for a whiskey to be considered a bourbon, the barrel used to age it can only be used one time. This leaves a lot of available barrels for rum producers to use. Rum aging is not limited to just bourbon barrels, however. Creative producers are aging in former wine casks such as Port, Sherry, and Madeira, even Cabernet casks. Some producers are utilizing former beer barrels. Some are utilizing a combination of casks. For example, the rum may spend its first five years or so in a bourbon barrel and then are transferred to a sherry oak cask where they may spend the next five years or so. The producers are only limited by their imaginations. Now, how does the actual aging process work when the rum is resting in the barrel? On the inside of the barrel, the wood has typically been either charred or toasted which the rum will come in contact with. Now the difference between charred and toasted is the degree to which the wood has actually been burned. Charred barrels are burned to a crisp and look sort of like the remains of an extinguished campfire, which leaves more ash residue for the rum to absorb. As far as flavor, barrels that have charred wood interiors tend to impart sweeter flavors like caramel and honey. The heavier charred barrels also tend to filter out more of the harsher elements of the rum itself while aging, which makes the finished product a bit smoother. Toasted barrels have been heated a bit more gently, with the char being much lighter. This tends to produce a lighter shade rum with a sharper taste. Now the physical location where the rum is being aged also plays a major factor in the final taste profile. Rums resting in more tropical climates tend to age faster due to the more rapid expanding and contracting of the barrels, whereas those aged in cooler climates tend to age slower. There is also the inevitable evaporation of a portion of the rum from the barrel, which is known as the angel share. In the warmer climates, the angel share is much higher due to this constant barrel expansion and contraction. Anywhere from 5 to 7% is lost per year. By contrast, the angel share in cooler climates is usually around 2 to 3% per year. This lost rum is usually replaced with rum from other barrels that started the maturation process at the same time. There are a couple of other aging techniques that producers employ, such as the Solera method, which involves using multiple casks with different ages, which we'll cover this in the blending module. And also there is dynamic aging. Instead of allowing the rum to age in one location, typically a warehouse, with dynamic aging, the rum casks spend some of their time aging on ships as they voyage around the ocean. This constant motion of the ship allows the rum itself to move around in the barrel, which naturally puts a larger percentage of the rum in contact with the charred portion of the barrel. One distillery in the Cayman Islands even ages their rum seven fathoms or 42 feet below the surface of the ocean, taking advantage of the ever-changing currents below the water. Now, the time that a specific rum spends in the barrel is the choice of the producer. Some even age not based on an exact time, but based on a consistent tasting examination of the product. We'll discuss the last stage of the rum process in the last module, blending and bottling. <laughs>